hit and you'll record. Yeah. Good. Um, so I guess I can start with a welcome to the July 13th meeting of the Amherst Board of Health and read this preamble. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 and renewed by Governor Maura Healy, this meeting of the Board of Health will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so following the instruction on the Board of Health, the Board of Health posted on agenda on the, via Zoom. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access proceedings as soon as it is technologically possible. After this meeting, all approved Board of Health minutes are posted on our website once they are approved by the board. I will now open the July 13th, 2023 Board of Health meeting at 5.30 with a roll call. Um, Tim? Yeah. Ramala? Yes, here. here. Maureen, here. Um, we don't see Lauren. Um, so I, I guess we really need Lauren uh, for the first item on the agenda, which is to review and receive the mint minutes because I was not present at the June 8th meeting. So we could put, should we push that to later in, but help me remember not to go, not to forget that. Um, and I guess then now is our time for public comment. I don't know if there's anyone who is interested in making a comment. We have a couple. I'll allow the phone number to talk first. OK. Um, so and I would I, just, oh, I was I'm just sorry. going to say that a public comment is limited to two minutes per person. And it's not a question and answer period. It's just for a comment. Yes, th and thank you. And I'll just um, say if they can please state their name and where they live. Please. Am I unmuted? Oh, so yes. So um, Nancy, if you can yes. state your your name and uh, where you live. Hi, Nancy Gilbert, 166 Lincoln Avenue, former Board of Health member. <laughs> I know this is Jennifer's last meeting, and I just wanted to come on and publicly make a statement thanking her for all that she's done for over 10 years as a public health nurse and the director covering both director and public health nurse and that she's made a difference to the town for all the better and it's a huge loss that the town won't have her anymore and so i wanted to thank her and i want to thank all the board members because you're all so special oh. that's all <laughs> Thank you, Nancy. It's very kind of you to join us. It's good to hear your voice. Okay, it's strange not to prepare and be here yeah. for it. But it's nice. Okay. Thank you. Looks like there's another person with a hand up. So the person with a 857, if you can state your name and where you live, please. Yes, hi. It's me. It's Lauren. Sorry, oh, I didn't. Hi. I'll let oh. you guys know. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm going to be on the phone. Okay. Thank, thank you. You know, we were looking for your, um, I know your phone number, um, so we'll promote you. Yes. Sorry about that. And I was looking for emails. That's no yeah. problem. Okay. No problem. All right. So you should be moving over. Because it's a phone, uh, I can't promote her to a panelist. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Well, that's okay. All right. Okay. So now we can actually go right back to where we, we were going to start was the review and receive the meeting minutes from June 8th, 2023. Um, does anyone have any comments? on those minutes or questions or corrections? Hmm. 
No. Oops. Um, again, I can't vote on that, but we can need a motion then to accept the minutes from mm -hmm. that meeting as written. I can make a motion that we accept the uh, minutes from June 8th. And a second. I'll second. And any discussion? No. Should we end to vote? Uh, Tim? Aye. Kremola? Aye. Lauren? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, because I, I, I was raising my hand. Um, oh, just talk. But I, I did have I did have one <laughs> I did have one um, correction. It was about uh, the me seconding um, the boat on a geothermal well. I don't believe that is correct. So I just wanted to know if that could be corrected. I think it's on, um, I didn't underline it. Oh, right. But it says uh, that I seconded the motion, but then I abstained and I, I, I don't think I seconded. Okay, thank, thank you, Lauren. But yeah, that was a-, mm -hmm. a, a Well, we could well, go correct. back to the recording and check to see who seconded the motion yeah. and just okay. the correction okay. if needed. I should have did that. No, no, we can do that. Absolutely, we'll check. Okay. All right. Should we revote then to accept the minutes? We'll make another motion. Just correct. It's just updating the <laughs> what we're going to do. Yeah, I can make a motion to accept the meeting minutes as amended, based on the comments you know, for June eighth. And I'll second it. And now we'll go to voting again. Um, Tim? Aye. Pamela? Aye. And Lauren? Aye. Okay, so minutes will be accepted. Um, so there's no public comment. So old business. Um, so, so the body art regulations. Um, I, I hope people have had a chance to review them and to bring forward any corrections or questions that they might have about them. I know that they are extensive, 34 pages, and um, at times a little bit repetitive given the nature of the different aspects of the regulations. But um, I just wonder if there are any what what people are thinking about those state of that document at the time this time um i know Carmel and i looked at them together and we tried to clean things up and make them make sense um if there, if there are no comments, are we ready to actually vote to accept them? It's Lauren? Uh, I, I looked at it briefly. I can't say that I read every page. Um, so is there something in particular that we should that that we should be looking out for, like that you updated particularly for for this, you know, vote. Well, yeah, I know some things came out in the discussion, but I don't want to hold things up. But also, I I didn't thoroughly read the whole thing. Okay. Honestly. Um, I think the main changes. A lot of things were updated just to include like a reason why we have these regulations and some wording and some things around sanitation and all and and all uh, autoclaves and the fact that if we don't use reuse items, 
the establishment does not need an autoclave. That's a big, uh, uh, it's complicated expense for a lot of uh, shops. And, um, but the main things we updated is the fact that we can have guest artists. That was the reason this was brought to the board and that we uh, adopted some regulations from primarily from Northampton to include that. And that we also added um, regulations to allow for apprenticeships for both uh, piercing art artists and uh, tattooing artists. Um, we the other main aspect that we changed was the way the rule the regulations were written in Amherst. They only allowed. Um, a fairly limited uh, number of piercing procedures, very uh, straightforward ones like ears, eyebrows, lip. I can't remember exactly, umbilicus and maybe the mm -hmm. tongue, I can't remember. But most other municipalities seem to have a broader range of options in terms of piercing. So we went in a direction that allowed piercing, but then listed a lot of things that we felt would not be allowed. So it was a, a kind of a flip of how to describe what's what's allowed in the town of Amherst. And it pretty much mirrors exactly uh, Northampton's regulation. Those, those I think are the main changes. Um, okay. But um, no, I understand that it's a lot. Um, the, other people feel comfortable voting on these at this time, or they need more of a chance to review them? So there are a couple of questions. Uh, I see the document has a lot of comments, and uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if, if there's comments are incorporated or or they just uh, to track what changes had been made. It's just to track that. That's a, I guess what came to you was surprised to me actually is what that's the view. If you just went up into review and said don't change, don't show the comments, they will go away. Um, so that was mostly for my use, and I didn't realize that it went out in that form. So um, that probably distracted more than helped. Although it did point the thing to the things that were different I, in some ways. No, that's a helpful because we like to see where edits were made in. So, which is nice. So um, one thing I see is the effective date is uh, not updated. Uh, if that right, is I didn't, oh, yeah, I saw that. So, you know, if you want to vote on that, it will be good to also have no when it's going to be effective. And uh, um, I think, you know, uh, uh, in general, I think looks it looks pretty good. Um, and, and I think, you know, if, if you want to specifically vote, I think, uh, um, I think we, you can, you know, maybe we can discuss about when we want to have this one be effective mm -hmm. um, to start with. Yeah. Um, what we hear, I think, I think to change it changes. We we also need to have a hearing. Is that correct? When we put update regulations, do we have to have a hearing as well? You know, I I'll look into it and find out. Okay. I don't know. Um, and I know we did that on the tobacco regulations, but maybe mm. that was more of a higher profile yeah item um and but let, so here we are it's july um you know should we say like october 1st or something like that would that give people time to mm -hmm. digest them and for the health department inspectors to kind of get up you know uh, understand them as well and I can make sure it goes over to um, the permitting coordinator to mm -hmm. so they can decide a fee. Is right. It, should we give that a little more time to like November first or something? Just I, I just don't know how quickly this turnaround makes sense. Mm -hmm. 
So there is going to be a hearing. Um, we would like to have some sort of a, um, like a rough draft, which is some sort of having all the elements so that we can vote and then say it's open, we can open it first. So it will be like uh, at least next meeting, we could do a voting. Mm -hmm. um, after considering all, you know, we can consult with all the relevant people on permitting and everything. And if you vote next next meeting, uh, the, the following month might be a hearing. Mm -hmm. Maybe that is uh, September. September. So maybe <laughs> like November, the first of the year. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It'll be good to ask uh, the person who is looking forward for the visitor. Yeah. Notice, you know, if, if they have some sort of a something coming up very soon or. Yeah. Um, we could do November first. So it looks like it's that's the number is the earliest we could do. Excuse Even me? The, if that's number is the earliest we could do. Mm -hmm. uh, given that there's going to be public hearing, um, it's going to looks like this is an amendment, just like our tobacco tobacco. Yes, it is. So it'd be uh, just so, an amendment amended. Yeah. So. so we, a number of things do change. Maybe we can say November first. Suppose we could change that by next next meeting if we feel the need to do that. But I will put in a date of November first. If people don't think that's too short a window, or do you? I don't think so. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Sounds fine. Okay. All right. Um, so we'll, I'll send out a copy with a date and without all of the extraneous comments in the border, in the <laughs> margins, and maybe read through it one more time and make sure it doesn't say Northampton somewhere. <laughs> um, and, uh, and hopefully we can be prepared to vote on it. But I do encourage people to take a closer look if they can to just make sure that, you know, I got pretty immersed in it and, you know, um, uh, the make sure it makes sense <laughs> to, to, to uh, someone who reads it fresh. And they don't have any concerns about the changes. Um, all right, so that's a plan. And the next item is the toxic chemical regulation question. I don't know uh, where that is. I know we talked about changing that to more of a guideline, but also getting some input from other sources. So um, changing uh, the regulation into guidelines, I, I think um, I haven't done much in that, but mm -hmm. um, I know that uh, we're going to consult with few folks from on procurement and um, but uh, if there is any uh, input from on the current uh, document from mm -hmm. those departments I think it will be good for me to have so that we can modify that as guidelines but uh, I could work on this in the next month or so so okay is, is it something uh, we have shared uh, this is a question for Jennifer here. Did we share it with the other departments who have a stake in this regulations or uh, guidelines? I can definitely, you know, Jeremiah LaPlante, the facilities and maintenance manager, uh, right. would, would I think, be curious and appreciative of, of seeing it. Is that what you were thinking of? I, I'm looking for any type of a specific mm -hmm. edits they suggest or clarifications because it's no longer sure. a regulation, but it's going to be a guidelines. Yeah. Um, resources, uh, that type of things. Yeah, that's um, a great idea. I think it also, if we can uh, share it with the fire department. Oh, of course, yeah. Be... And maybe the um, public works. I can send it to the department heads. I think that's a good idea. That's a good idea. And uh, 
you know, if you, you know, if you if you want, you can give a specific time for them to review or give mm -hmm. suggestions, and and then That's once okay. they give suggestions, they can send it to me, and then I could uh, work on it. Okay, so I'll share your email with them. Sure. Okay. Any other comments about the toxic chemical regulation? Okay. Um, so remember the Board of Health Succession, that means, well, I have to say, it was a little surprise to me that Lauren is here and because we thought she was leaving us, but yeah. um, I'm, happy to hear that you're back. I just am curious, are you, what the terms are? Are you going to be finishing a third year or is this the beginning of another three-year term? I, I, I just, um, just my curiosity well, here. Yes. Uh, the town manager uh, uh, told me that to renew um, my, my, being on the board, I have to, I have to agree that the the renewed term has to be three years, but mm -hmm. I do not have to necessarily stay the whole three years. Um, and I thought because I replaced someone that I would automatically have a full three year term, but I guess my initial term was only for two. So that's why I suggested because there was going to be vacancies and not knowing when they would be filled, I would be willing to do at least one more year. And um, but from my understanding, you can't just sign up for another for another year. You have to agree to to a full three year term. Okay. Even if you don't stay. Okay. Full three years. Well, so, yeah, I, there was, oh, yeah. So I hope you're not too surprised. <laughs> no, well, welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and, um, and I think the other question is, I guess there, we're, we're still down one person member of the board. I don't know if there's any news about that. I, I don't have any news. Okay. And the last question is, um, as our former chairman just uh, showed up for this meeting, <laughs> unfortunately she did not stay. Um, uh, we we need to decide, decide on uh, who will be the chair of the board going forward. And I know um, I've been encouraged to accept that. And I, I feel I can do it for the next, like, till through September, but between October and at least till January, I have a big family commitment that makes going to make it hard for me to do that. And so I wondered how we can look at this is either a co-chair where we switch off and on, or if we do something that rotates, but it's just, um, I know everybody is busy um, and that's, but as am I. <laughs> so um, so I just feel like that's I'm going to be out of town about two and a half days a week. Um, it's just not something I see myself being able to do well. M one of the concerns that comes to me is that is, although it's not that frequent, there have been many occasions where there's been something to respond to on a rather short notice, like, mm. well, the pandemic, mm you know, mask mandates or uh, um, responses about the turf, athletic turf, uh, artificial turf, or um, I don't know, there's just been, a, I, I can't boil them off the top of my head, but I know there are times when the chair is involved and needs to kind of step forward. And I don't feel, feel I would be able to kind of get up to speed and, and do that effectively for in that time. So between like October and February. So um, so I don't know, what do other people have to say?
I don't oh. mind speaking. Oh, go ahead, Tim. Oh, I'm just asking, you know, uh, if what the rules are for a chair appointing someone to just to coordinate something in absence of, you know, for some, you know, those days. Mm. Or is it has to be a co-chair option or? I don't know if there rule what rules exist. I don't either, but I certainly can find out. So I guess we have a few months, a few meetings to find out a little bit more. Um, and for everybody to think about it a little bit more. Um, and see if we can work together so we can go ahead with this. And at least until there, if there is someone who wants to step forward to do be, be the chair in an ongoing way, that, that is also would, might be preferable. But I, I didn't have a sense that there was somebody who was ready to do that. Mm. Um, I I was interested in perhaps co-chairing. I know that I am still trying to figure out, um, you know, what we as a board, how we are, you know, coordinate coordinating and um, influencing, you know what the um, Department of Health is doing. Um, there, there is, you know, certain things that I'm passionate about that I am hoping will be discussed more. So I, I, I feel like we kind of are reacting, as you said, to things that have come up in the town. Um, and that have to do with with help with public health, but I think it kind of like waves our agenda here and there, and and so um, I I just would would like to to see like the board kind of set more of the agenda than like just um, topics that you know you know, may present themselves, you know, um, unexpectedly. Um, so I I would be interested in and in maybe co-chairing or like you said, um, filling the days or the months that you're not um, able to, but we also, as you said, have a vacancy. So I don't know if, what experience or who would fill that, but, um, I would like to to do a little bit more. I feel like I don't have a, um, a point of 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 work. Um, I kind of fell off the toxic uh, chemical regulation. I know that's still um, something that we're working on, but I feel um, there are some other areas, some other some other things that I would like to 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 put on the agenda. Um, Going back to like mental health and and um, some some other things. Um, so yeah, I you know I guess my understanding of the role of the board is to make regulations and 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 I'm not sh and try to support the department in what they are doing. Um, so I, I'm not sure how our, our, we fit in in terms of directing the department uh, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, the, the department is now in flux and we're, we're going to be working yeah. with a different director. Um, so there might be some conversations uh, going mm -hmm. forward about those issues. Well, shall we just put off any decision about this until at least August? I can get a little bit more information. 
and um, okay. give it to Kyle to present in August about co-chairing. Yeah, if you and could do stepping that in and, with us, that would be great. Yeah, and then maybe by then um, there'll be some interviews and another mm -hmm. member mm -hmm. uh, joining you. And then I can find out, um, or or maybe clarify the roles of mm -hmm. uh, board of health members versus health department, mm -hmm. and how they complement each other, but mm -hmm. you know, they they can be interpreted different roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be really helpful to okay. us. All right, so I have a little homework. That's good. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we always like that. Any other questions around these issues? No. So I guess, where are we? We're running a little on the early side, but I guess that's okay. Um, we're going into uh, new business. Uh, and the first item on that, uh, the agenda there is uh, the Simple Gifts Farm question regarding the hand washing station. Kyle, um, I know you know this. Will you please let Jeremy Barker Plotkin in? And if there's somebody else um, from Simple Gifts that wants to be um, join us as a panelist. Sure. Yeah. If the other person could raise their hand and just let me know um, who they are, if any. Promoted Jeremy, but I'm not seeing him pop up. Maybe Jeremy, yeah, if you can hear me, sometimes there's something you need to acknowledge to join as a panelist. I don't know if you're getting a prompt on your screen. Yeah. Jeremy, can you hear us? Right. He's muted. Yep, let's see. He may ask to unmute. There we go. <laughs> that took a while for me to get linked in here. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jeremy. To Welcome. Turn my video on, too. Yes, thank, thank you guys for um, letting me come in and, and speak with you. Excuse me, Jeremy. Is there anyone else that's joining you? Um. My business partner, Dave Tepper, might be here. And oh, there, okay. There may also be uh, Bruce Coldham or uh, Barbara Partee from the, okay. from the Land Trust may have also. Okay. Um, Kyle, thank you. So I'm yeah. going to yeah. panelists. Great. So are we waiting for someone else to join or is I'm trying to promote Dave, but I'm having a little trouble. Okay. Oh, he declined to be promoted to panelists. So um Jeremy, if you want to take it away. Okay. Um, yeah, so I sent you guys a letter. Um I guess uh the crux of the matter is really that we've we've been approved in the past and that you know there's just this all of a sudden this this change that um uh, and there are some uh factual errors that it seems like um susan malone made in in making the change that um she she thought that we had removed uh that we had a we have a hand washing we do have a hand washing sink in a nearby barn um and we had added uh the cambro Hand washing station in uh, 2020 in response to the pandemic to, you know, make it make it easier for people to wash their hands, um, but we still do have that hand washing sink in the barn that has hot water and, and plumbing and everything, and um, so that that is still there, and that was the the basis of our previous approval. Um, and I think also the. I think we're a relatively low risk um, establishment. 
you know, I think we, we may fit into that definition of a food establishment, but only just barely. We have prepackaged food and we have farm products, which are both um, exempted. I mean, the, the way the language reads, it's only farm products and only prepackaged food are two categories that are exempted from a food establishment. So we have the we, we have farm products and prepackaged food. So, you know, I guess we technically fit in that definition, but you know, we are a relatively low risk uh, food establishment. Um, and then uh, the hardship, it would just be, we, you know, we have a, we don't have plumbing in that building. Uh, we have a concrete floor. Um, so we would have to essentially build another structure um, like an outbuilding or something in order to create a hand washing sink there. Um, <clears throat> which just, it would be, you know, 40 or $50,000 and we don't have the wherewithal to do that. And, you know, there may be some grant programs that we could apply for, but I, I think they're all, everything I can think of is the, the, you know, the cycles passed for this year. So it would be over a year before we could apply and then get funding, um, through any of those grant programs. Um, Can I ask a question? I yes. I, this, I read through the documents that came from um, Susan Malone and and your letter, which was really helpful. Um, that it kind of makes a distinction between like a utility sink and a hand washing sink. Is there also a utility sink somewhere? Um, no, we don't have a utility sink somewhere. Okay, and I don't know if that's. An issue. I don't know if you need. I mean, I, it seems like you're right that, that 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 this there is a misunderstanding of some that, that that what was there was no longer there, and that makes this whole question pretty confusing right now um, to me. Um, but I also wondered there was some mention on the form that about a utility sink, and I don't know if that's just a separate requirement to have. I believe the utility sink is so that we can, if we mop the floor, we can dump the mop water out. Yeah. Which it just it just seems like a small a small thing to yeah to have you know have to have a sink to dump dump out your mop water. Um, is there someone um, in terms of? Uh, whether you are or not, whether you're exempt or not, is there someone who writes these regulations that we can ask? Just seems to me odd that if you qualify in two categories, that means you're not exempt. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that's that's the state. It's the state code. So I don't know. I mean, you, you guys but, must know. What but does it explicitly say that if you're both, that you are not exempt? It doesn't explicitly say that. It says, you know, they're they're in that regulation. It's there's a food establishment is, and there's a list of things that it is, and then there's a food establishment is not. And I believe it was I, I cited it in my letter two A and three A. Two A was only the, the establishment only serves or only sells prepackaged food and then 3a i think it was was only sells you know fresh raw unprocessed produce and maple syrup and honey and um, things that fall into the farm product category so that it didn't it didn't specifically say well if you have two of these categories then you are a food establishment um it, I guess, you know, it's a matter but of you, have you been um, operating technically as a food establishment? I, I don't mean are you a food establishment? I mean, have you been we have been filling out the application and getting inspected by by Susan Malone every year since and yeah, so f filling out the the food establishment application and and getting an, an inspection once a year. Mm -hmm. And so she had previously a, approved um, the hand washing sink in the barn, um, and and then was under some misapprehension. We had uh, 
we had, you know, taken down that barn, which just, just isn't true. And I guess at one point there was a question of whether it didn't have hot water and then you had to add hot water. So that happened. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we did we did put hot water in there. And okay. That that was that was resolved. Okay. And that was actually that was required as well. So that that barn is where we um, process vegetables and we do mm -hmm. have plumbing in that barn. Um, and mm -hmm. we're required to have a hot water hand washing sink in order to process vegetables. Mm -hmm. And so if you had to put in another like utility sink, that might be possible to put it in there or something. I suppose so. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't know. I mean, I feel like for us to decide on this right now, um, given the information that this barn and the sink exist, it'd be to just say, I think we might need to go back to the inspectors and ask them to, to just, what they think if that in, given the fact that those things are still present um yeah maybe uh, they need to come out and like lay lay eyes on the uh, <laughs> there's the sink it's still there here's the barn it's still there <laughs> um yeah um so i don't i guess in some sense that there's some misunderstanding my uh, my question too is then are there still other things that are 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 a concern but um that seemed to be the the main issue was the the hand washing sink. Mm -hmm. So, um, I I think in in terms of uh, section three A you mentioned uh, for that offers only prepackaged food that are not time or temperature controlled safety foods. Um, if meat or eggs or anything you know which require a particular temperature and you know time of storage i mean that doesn't come under that uh, category is that right oh okay yes we do have we do have frozen foods and we have it's all it's all prepackaged but it, yeah. there is some frozen and refrigerated and and meat the eggs are actually um part of the farm mm -hmm. so the that, farm that uh, three eggs the three A class will not apply for you, right? What's that? Because you know, the three A you mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, for for uh, food establishment does not include or or excluding things, but looks like you have a safety foods which require time of storage and temperature controls. Okay, and we do you know the the main um, the main food safety risk for those for those foods is keeping them at temperature and, and we yep. keep um we keep temperature logs um so that's and that that's something that we put in um at susan's uh insistence or at, at her suggestion i should say yeah so um so may, maybe that's one of the reasons why you do fall into the category of a food establishment because it yeah I guess they're, that they're all prepackaged so it's safer than a lot of things but it still requires that monitoring um mm -hmm. for uh maintaining the right temperatures um yeah so maybe the whole issue isn't total isn't moot in, in, that, mm -hmm. in that basis um I think the comment on the sink it looks like uh, there is a sink, but the inspector has noted that there's no sink or something. So maybe we have to refer it back to the inspector to actually revisit and then maybe come back, you know, come yeah. back to the board. Okay. Yeah. That, now, that seems reasonable. Yeah. Um, so we can just do we need to, we don't have to make a motion to do that. We can just ask the inspector to take another look, right? Yeah. Um, just to review the, that information and maybe we, we check the area where the barn is and, and that was previously accepted. Okay, um, so specifically we'll ask um, the inspector to go out to the, the barn, Jeremy, is that right? And, mm -hmm. and, and there's a sink in the barn that, yep. okay. 
And how far is the barn from the from your shop? It's about two hundred feet. So it's close by. Yeah. I understand that this other hand washing station was supplemental, you know, in in your mind, and that was helpful. But um, it maybe got us off the track a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Anything else for Susan? Or that's it. Yeah. And Jeremy, and does that just sound to right? clarify the issue of is there another sink needed? Because that she mentions that in in the notes in the narrative of uh, her report. Uh, no mop sink service sink. Submit plan and install by November 30th. So to install by November 30th. So I guess that's the other question. Is that required? Yeah, and I guess I guess I have some trouble with the, the idea that a mop sink wasn't required in the past and that now it is. Right. Um, I don't know if they changed any rule, you know, if there's new regulations or not, and what happens to to businesses who have followed the existing rules and haven't changed anything, do they have to upgrade? Um, so I guess I that would be a question that I have. Mm -hmm. I know for like some building things, like I have some deck railings that aren't compliant. Uh, they're fine as long as I don't take them down <laughs> and try to put them wow. back again. Um, so uh, I don't know how that applies to food service, but you know, mm -hmm. I, it's just a question in my mind. Um, okay. So just want to make sure we're clear about what's required and that you and that the inspectors are clear about what you have. Um, so you can move forward. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So looking at the inspector report, I think um, there might be some ambiguity like a sinks with hot water and sinks with with no hot water are you know the two different ones. So I don't know if you have a sink in the in the barn with hot water access yes we do okay yeah so and, that, that, and that clarifies yeah yeah the the way that read in the report was we had a hand washing stink sink and susan came and looked at it and said it's not it's not hot water and we put in a hot water here there um so it's the same it's the same sink mm -hmm. and and in the report there are some narratives mentioned for section eight and nine about eggs being held over the produce. I don't know if you- if Yes, we've something. resolved that issue. Resolved that, and then no yeah. proper method of sanitizing has been resolved. Um, sanitizing. Yeah, it says like a no proper method of sanitizing. Uh, I don't know what that means. Uh, Maybe I think uh, clarifying with the inspector might be helpful when the, during the visit. I didn't notice that in the report. I mean, the report was everything that's ever happened. So that, do you, do you remember, do you have the report in front of you to say what yeah. the? Yeah, I'm reading the report right here. Yeah, what is, what is that? So uh, maybe I'll try uh, there are some 22 sections, uh, but eight and nine, for nine, there is a narrative added to it in the in the text. No proper method of sanitizing. I don't know if you see that. So section nine is foot contact surfaces, cleaning and sanitizing. And there is a note which is named as narrative saying no proper method of sanitizing. Huh. This is in the um, the report from this season, the one from June 1st? Uh, it was given to us as one single document. And the last page is the report, which was signed by Susan. In Georgia, I think. It says it says food establishment inspection inspection report, town of Amherst. And then there's, there's a bunch of check boxes. Um, oh, that, here's the narrative. The no, yeah. Are you able to see the narrative? More yeah. Yet? Oh, narrative. So it says eggs do not have expiration or packing date and that we've resolved 
um, no mop sink, service sink, um, no hand wash sink, submit plans to health inspector, installation completed by May 30, 2024, request for hearing must be in writing within 10 days. I, I don't see, is that the document that you're looking at? I think this is a different document. It looks more like this one, which I don't know if you can see it, maybe, but it's maybe, slightly can you, different. Can you put it up on the Zoom maybe? Uh, uh, with your virtual background, it won't work. Yeah, I guess yeah, that's not doing me any good, is it? <laughs> um, it's just an, a separate page. Uh, um, oh, this is actually, this was 5719. Five, this is old, old news. I just realized that the date on that is 5719. If you look at the top. Oh, it yeah, could be so a word of we have um, you know spray spray bottles of cleaning agents for cleaning cleaning surfaces there. Yeah, so that I think that's not uh, not current. It's part of the historical documents here, and that yeah, then that's referred to in in the in the summary narrative of 2019. That's when there was no hot water and then that was corrected mm -hmm. and i'm sure the egg issue and the sanitizing issue were also corrected at that time yeah so so it's really just this is more recent document that yeah is the, the checklist that the egg issue was um was in the in the uh report from this year and we've addressed it, it we had we had previously um she had cited us for not having dates on on our eggs um and we addressed that um and then we've actually stopped producing eggs and we've been getting them from another farm and when she came in june um there weren't dates on the other farm's eggs which we hadn't we hadn't noticed um mm -hmm. or thought about and so she she brought that to our attention and we we now we've gotten that other farm to, okay. to put dates on the eggs so that's okay. that's been addressed okay yeah, we just don't want to have to revisit any of these other things. We just yep. want to focus <laughs> yep. on the main event. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well, we appreciate your presence, Anna, and your the information you provided us. So hopefully we can come to some solution that will be less drastic than the one proposed. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, for listening and and yeah, we'll look forward to hearing from Susan. Mm -hmm. So um, I guess we can go ahead to the next item on the agenda on new business. It's the geothermal well permit for 170 Wildflower Drive. I have as has everyone had a chance to look at that and are there any comments or concerns about it? Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, I looked at the pictures um, and I just wanted to state before we go for a vote um, that I don't know how many um, geothermal wells that we've voted yes for, um, but my main question that stays in my head is how do the wells affect like the surrounding, you know, waterways. And it always feels like I'm like blindly 
voting or or not voting at all, like making the decision not to vote. And I wanted to know how we can like have a better understanding of that, you know, if geothermal wells is going to be something that we have to continue to vote on. Is there a way to understand a little bit better, like if it's going to lower the water table or like, I just, I just don't really know. And I'm trying, I thought like there were other committees that were going to um, look at the, the permitting before we voted. Like, I just don't really know how we're, how we're, you know, making sure that, you know, the number of wells um, is okay and how it's affecting, you know, any other water, surrounding bodies of water. I, I don't know if I'm just, this is something that I should be concerned about. I'm, I'm just not sure. So I just wanted to let, you know, the board know that's always like, a concern and I, I'm not sure we've addressed that or if we should address it. Let me clarify a couple of things. Uh, this is not groundwater pumping permit. So this is not groundwater in the sense that it will not affect water levels in the groundwater. So I just want to clarify, this is a geothermal well. Um, so okay. the, the second one is geothermal wells are closed loop. That means they don't, they are actually closed in terms of circulation. That means it doesn't, nothing comes out or comes in, goes in. It's just the energy transfer. So, so that's why I think it, it in terms of uh, um, any influence on uh, groundwater or water, water uh, resources, it, I, I don't think it has an influence. Uh, only uh, time it, you know, there might be some disturbances during the installation stage. I think that's when uh, many of the installers, like the Dan Dandelion, uh, this company uh, has some sort of a mitigation of uh, any type of a disturbance when they are digging. But once if it's installed, I think it's closed loop. It, it has uh, no influence in terms of any type of water levels. Just to clarify. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My understanding too is that there's just this fluid that gets pumped down into the into the pipe, goes across and comes up in it in the pipe and never yeah. goes in or out. It's all just going around in a circle. And um, so unless there's a breakage or something like that, which is very unlikely, and then actually the fluid in it is not particularly is not toxic um it 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 seems pretty safe um in terms of that that itself and like i said tim has more information about what the process of, of putting in the well might do and where the location should be and away from other structures and and uh uh water lines and so you know sewage so uh septic systems and things like that but um but the the actual well itself is a relatively is a very safe yep. uh, 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 safe project it it, it doesn't mm -hmm. interact with the the water in the ground okay Uh, any other questions around this particular installation? I looked at the plan, uh, looked at the general proposed that two bore wells, uh, I mean, the two, two uh, geothermal wells uh, locations. Um, and it looks like it's pretty, I think it also is reviewed by the inspector. Mm -hmm. uh, on the site visit, it looks uh, very straightforward. You know? Yeah, I agree. Um, 
are there other questions before we um, vote on on this item? I guess we're okay then. Um, can we make a motion regarding the geothermal well permit? I can make a motion that we approve the uh, geothermal well application, uh, 170 Wildflower Drive. Um, I'll second okay. it. Um, and for a vote, uh, Lauren? Yeah. Pramila? I can't hear you. You're muted. We're not hearing. Oh, yeah. you, there you Sorry, are. I just figured out that I was muted. Yes. Okay. Um, Kim? Aye. Maureen? Aye. So that's approved. Um, The next item on the agenda is the Board of Health Summary of the Report from 2023. Um, that was, I appreciated that and it was interesting to read. And I didn't know if that was a yearly, um, is, that a, is that something that's done annually? I, I hadn't noticed that before, <laughs> or I hadn't registered it at least before. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I was so happy to read this. I think it's really important to to have accomplishments like uh -huh. that. And I thought it was such a smart idea and it is a smart idea. And I've, I see that it has been done in the past and maybe that was Nancy doing it in the yeah. past. So okay. um, I think it's it's a great thing to see where we are and what we want to keep building on. Mm -hmm. No, I think it was very helpful to look at where yeah. things to... Um, kind of track and, and try to keep moving mm -hmm. forward yep. um i agree and it helps to know where you where you've been yeah now where are those filed um so well that's that's interesting because that's something that i've been working on as i sort of clean it up and get everything buttoned up so on the town of amherst the, there's a share drive and mm -hmm. all of these are legal um uh, documents and they go um filed away under um, health department, board of health, board of health documents, and then it goes into the year and then into the month. Okay. And is that accessible to anyone? So uh, people can file to see documents, you know, um, these, this should have been posted, you know, now we're doing these packets that everything mm -hmm. goes to the board of health, um, should be available to the public. Mm -hmm. um, so so we've done that sometimes in the past, but but just within the past year, everything has gone up on the website. So if we're talking about it, people should be able to to take a look at that. And if this didn't make it on, because sometimes things trickle in, I try we try very hard to get everything up. I'll make sure it's up there, but I'll put the summary. I'll check and make sure it's this one. The summary report for 2023 is up. And that just stands on its own. It doesn't have to be a, like an attachment to the to the uh, minutes or anything. It can just be in, in there, a document. Right, right. So if you go to- Like uh, we the, talked about it, it's uh, so it's there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Board of Health, and then you go to, or the Health Department, Board of Health, and then if you scroll down, you, you have to sort of, you know, click down. Yeah, the packets are packet. there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it's nice to have that report, you know, I, I could see uh, one of the question is how many geothermal wells we voted on. Yeah. 16, 16 geothermal wells in the past year. So it's good to have those types of numbers. You know, sort of a, it definitely is trending here in this past year. So yeah. um, I guess the economics of it may be more favorable right now or were when the oil prices were so sky high or um, or the sense of wanting to do something to reduce carbon footprints. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, or, but it is, a, it is certainly a, a small trend because uh, it's, ex 
it's very expensive to install these things. Um, all right, so again, moving along. And, and I really appreciate the thoroughness the, of the job yeah. that Nancy did on that. It was really helpful. Yeah, I agree. Um, so next we have the director's update. Okay, so the director's update, I have two items. One, the first is the staffing update and public health director. Um, the director's position has been posted internally. I believe it's been posted externally. So there is a, a team, a hiring team that's being convened and um, hopefully those um, interviews will start soon. Um, the interim director will be Dave Zomack. Okay. And that's the staffing update. Um, and then any questions about that? Um, so um, the material that goes out to the Board of Health, um, Kyle O'Connor has been uh, organizing it over the past few months. And if any questions from the board or the public, they can email um, the public health at amherstma.gov web page. Um, address rather or call 259-3077 um, and Kyle will have the answer for you. Always has the answer, right Kyle? <laughs> yes, I try. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then uh, the second thing, the public health programming, I wrote, this is me, opioid resettlement funds planning. So it's opioid settlement funds planning. Um, we talk about re refugee resettlement. So anyhow, that's where that word is in my brain. So that is a typo, opioid settlement funds. I don't have any information or an update for the town per se, what's going on. Um, people can always go on to um, massachusetts.gov, um, um, the AG state opioid settlement uh, web page and see precisely what Amherst is getting when what other towns are getting. But I did want to talk about two things that the health, the public health department is doing. So the first thing is that um, our public health nurse, Olivia Lara Cahoon, um, has been trained in, um, it's called Train the Trainer. So she's a trainer to um, uh, uh, instruct people how to give Narcan. So there are a lot of people in Hampshire County that do this. It's a great um, a service that um, Hampshire Hope, I believe, um, gives. Tapestry Health may give it. Um, uh, uh, there's different ways to get trained, but I wanted to offer that to the public. They can call the health department here if they want to learn how to give Narcan. If anyone wants free Narcan, you can get it from Tapestry Health. Um, that's the Needle Exchange Tapestry Health in Northampton that's on Center Street. Learn to Cope has free Narcan in Greenfield. Um, and then Walgreens, it's free with Mass Health. Um, that's one of the things that we're doing. And thank you to Olivia for providing that service. And then the second thing is um, that we want to talk about harm reduction and substance abuse. But Kyle, can you please share what you have um, organized? Yeah, so working with Jen, uh, we noticed that a gap in health of Amherst um, that was highlighted in the community health needs assessment that was recently done focuses on harm reduction and substance abuse. So we kind of collaborated and thought of a way to reduce that. And our uh, proposal is to put up a free sharps box accompanied with information about local resources um, so we have three goals for this project. Number one, to reduce the number of needles in the environment uh, where they have the potential to harm other members of the community. Two, to lessen the financial stress of those looking to dispose of their sharps safely and who cannot afford the fee under the current sharps program. And three, uh, to provide information about local resources for those suffering from substance abuse and or other factors that affect their health. So I recently had a meeting with Jeremiah LaPlante, our facilities manager, and we found a good spot outside of the bank center on an exterior wall. So partnering with Tapestry and other local community partners uh, like Craigsdoors and the Survival Center, Police Department, Fire, uh, and Cress, 
We hope that this project will make Amherst safer and more equi equitable community to live in. And uh, you can always contact me if you guys have any questions or want to give your input or any ideas. Um, Jen said the number and the email earlier. So yeah, let me know if you have any immediate questions about that. Um, but if you don't, you can always reach me by email. Mm, that's a good beginning. I, you know, that's a, that's great. Uh, I also, you know, I, I guess maybe it was pro provoked by the AG report and the settlement. I kind of looked at our information on the website about harm reduction, and there is some. And I, I recall that, you know, Tapestry was going to be doing some uh, mobile uh, harm reduction, like going meeting people kind of where they are. And it is in the website, but you kind of have to dig for it a little bit. It's like, I can't remember, I, you know, I don't have it in my mind, but I think it, you had to had to go into other resources or something like that to find that, that you actually can call their number and they will help you out um, mm -hmm. with different kinds of services to do with harm reduction, including needle exchange. I think testing, um, I think the testing of the drugs themselves for yeah. fentanyl, but also pointing people towards testing for different uh, illnesses that might be associated with, with uh, IV drug use. So um, I think to kind of, although I, my guess, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of jaded about how much websites help people from college health because people we put all this information up in college health and people don't go there but i think if we're going to have it there it we could be a little a little more uh available um, yeah no thank you we're really any kind of feedback about the web the web page and yeah. you know we look at things we look at it again and then we look at it so often that sometimes we miss it but also Kyle is redoing the web page with uh -huh. IT here. So it's okay. gonna, we're gonna have sort of, it's gonna be updated and and, uh -huh. and some new life brought into it. So Kyle, you heard all that, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. I think yeah. it is, I do agree that it is kind of hard to find. Maybe we should promote the number for the local area um, for their mobile harm reduction unit, maybe a little bit better on the website so we can take a look at that and see how yeah. we can move that up yeah. and easier to find and i know on the um sharps box that's going to be put up that's is going to put one of their big stickers on it that has the number to call um mm -hmm. if they wanted uh, like a more um in-person type of service so um, and i believe cress is also um in talks with tapestry health and forming a better relationship so i'm sure we're we're all gonna get together and solve the problem hopefully <laughs> So I was curious also, there's there's a fee for for um the sharps containers or yeah, yep. so, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> so residents uh, of I think it's Amherst, Pelham, and Shutesbury. Um, it's for residents only, but they can come into the health department with their kind of court containers, um, or the, the kind of makeshift ones they make out of like laundry uh, detergent bottles, but uh, they bring that into the health department, um, and then we prorate it. So the normal and, size and like DPW yeah. and DPW yeah, at the transfer station. Transfer, so, yeah. Um, yeah, that's something we do. It is a five dollar minimum deposit fee, but okay. Uh, yeah, you kind of get the court box with that. So when they come back, it's not like another five dollar. So we try to keep it um, as affordable as possible. But again, um, this project kind of targets those who are suffering from housing mm -hmm. security, economic insecurity. So mm -hmm. no, I a, think it's good. I mean, uh, that is a barrier that would be good to remove. Um, it's a law in California that um, people that sell sharps need to take it back. Um, mm -hmm. So it's not not the law in Massachusetts. Oh. Yeah. Maybe that'll change someday. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. Um, so that was a 
B, public health programming. And then I'm just going to add two quick things as, as I normally do. But just if you go to our web page and Kyle will retool it under mosquitoes, um, we are full members of the Pioneer Valley Mosquito Control District this year. Um, so we're getting updates. If you go in there, you can see some of the latest information about different mosquito um, species that are being um, captured in Amherst. So that's, I don't want to say fun, but it is interesting to see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And then um, the um, wastewater surveillance um, will continue throughout the end of the calendar year. So it's just been pegged rock bottom um, for burden of, of uh, COVID, the virus in our wastewater samples. Um, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, as the, you know, as the fall months, you know, head in, um, if that bumps up a little bit. Um, and then um, I had a questionnaire from the state, would we ever want to see other uh, viruses tested? Um, so that wasn't anything they have planning for Amherst. I don't know what they have planning, but really this is how I, I read about surveillance and wastewater testing was polio uh, virus. So mm -hmm. anyhow, I think it'd be interesting to see what else they can do with wastewater. Um, and then um, come fall, we'll have the new um, vaccine, um, whatever that is. When it comes out, the monovalent, the new monovalent, um, it'll be available in the health department as well as our other partners. Do you have any indication now about whether that's going to be supplied by the state or whether there's going to be requirements to use insurance or anything yeah, like that? Yeah, I think what they, have, and I'm going to tell you, I don't, I, I'm not remembering now, but they they said that they'll be able to provide it for a while. So I, I suspect it'll be the next round. It'll be from the state. Mm -hmm. um, we always, as a health department, get vaccine for uninsured. Um, mm -hmm. So that's something that we'll always be able to give out to vulnerable mm -hmm. populations um, or those in need. Um, mm -hmm. But but to the masses, I think, I believe we're going to be able to get it. That's my hope. Yeah. That's it for the director's report. Kyle, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and I don't think there've been any topics unanticipated by the chair that I heard about, um, no. <laughs> but, um, can, I, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Uh, uh, you were discussing about the sharps and needle disposal program. Uh, we are charging people $5 and, uh, if they bring their own container, it's very ambiguous. It says there might be additional cost. So it looks like, you know, that is something the- It's not, the, I'm, you know, I'll have to look at the wording. It's a really good program. It's been running for yeah. a while. I don't think it's additional. I think it's prorated. So we really try to work with the people um, and look at the volume. If they bring a plastic, I didn't mean to cut you off, Tim. I'm sorry. I did cut you off. Go on. No, no, no. I was me meaning it says prorated charge and there may be an additional cost. So- for those who are reading, oh. it's like some sort of a discouraging, you know, that yeah, if they cannot a... afford it, you know. So, so I think maybe that is something we we should encourage people to actually, you know, uh, that we will work with them or because it's five dollars is, you know, it's you know it's something we should provide incentives for people to bring in, and uh, I I favor that somehow we should have like a free <laughs> uh, instead of paying five dollars, but that is logistics. <laughs> and I think that additional fee was um, in regard to if the container that they brought it in um, perhaps was like a thinner plastic than like it's regulated for. So if it is in like a, a container that isn't appropriate, they have to like maybe put it in a actual sharps container. I'm not totally sure. I can revisit the, the binder um, tomorrow and look at the wording. I agree with Tim. I just think it makes so much sense for us to remove as many barriers as possible. And 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 I you know I think five dollars is something, um, you know the we should actually provide that as an incentive. You know, bring it over and you know, uh, and even if we can offer some sort of an extra funds for people who bring in, 
give them five dollars <laughs> to bring it in i'm just putting some incentive uh, ideas you know so Um, so I guess we're coming to a close here. I do want to second Nancy's uh, comments uh, to Jennifer, you know, in terms of the her work over the years for the for the town of Amherst. I, I saw an action during the height of the pandemic. And oh, you were there. Uh, <laughs> yes, I know. Saw her as a calm person in the midst of <laughs> a lot of chaos sometimes and and her 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 expertise and her organization and uh was really appreciated and Thank uh, you. and then continued and now as you know with a very thoughtful approach to the to the as the depart as the head of uh the department and also will really I'm sad to see you go totally understand why this other positions might be better for you and this point in your life, but I really appreciate yeah. all that you have done. Thank you, Maureen. I really appreciate that and everybody. And it's really been an honor of my professional career to be here um, during the pandemic and work with you all. And I just sincerely just, you you all are volunteers with what you do. And I, I have the same feeling towards you showing up and, and giving your time to the public. And, uh, I, I think we're better for it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments at this point in time? No, then I guess we'll look for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion. Motion to adjourn. I can second. Um, and Lauren? Uh, yes. Okay, and Premla? Yes. Tim? Yes. Maureen? Yes. Thank you, everybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Good night. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thank you. Okay, care. Thank you all. Yeah. Okay. And I didn't mention the next meeting time, oh. but when is that? It's the second. August 10th. The August 10th. 10th on the. Mm -hmm. All right. Sounds good. See you then. Bye. Okay. Bye. Good night. Good night.